finding sources, managing references, and actually interrogating all of those references for the information you need used to be the most painful thing about academia and research. Well, apart from managing your supervisor, of course, but now there's an AI tool that can make it super easy, and I think you should check it out. And that tool is Anara. Anara, here it is. Look at it. It's lovely. I've put it into dark, sexy science mode for you. I like the uh, dark theme, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, this tool comes with a load of things and I think you should know about them. The first thing I think you need to know about Inara is this. If you click here, you get all of these things. But Andy, what do they do? Well, they are AI agents that will help you do specific tasks. AI agents are becoming the future of academia and research. And here you can choose the one that best suits what you want to do. So if you want to do research, look, you just click on research. If you want to search your workspace, we'll talk about that in a minute. But any of these workspaces over here, You've got search the web, search papers, search YouTube, or just in case you want to know a little bit about Dr. Andy Stapleton. And then you've also got this, complete form, create citation, create flashcards, create image. The create image thing is a little bit rubbish at the moment, uh, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. But everything else is pretty darn good. So I went over here and I asked it, find me the summary of recent... Oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, what a weird prompt. Find me the summary of recent research updates for OPV devices and anacomposite um, materials. And this is what I've got here. So you can see that it read the workspace and it found 24 res results in my workspace. It searched the internet and found 13 results. It searched the web for papers and found 19 results. And this is what happened when it all finished. And you can click on these. Let's click there. And you can see that these are highly relevant. And 2024, yes, this is exactly what I want. The agents are working for you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd really want to know Know about this one um this was this is a really good efficiency okay but let's not get into the nitty gritty just yet because there's so much more you can do and i really like this so if we head back here you can see all of these other options um you can also which i really like select the model that you use and you can select how many words you want so if you're not paying you get 250 word limit but if you want a long response like you're doing a literature review and you really want it to go deep you can select no limit you've also got a load of settings and this is what i really like now check this out because you can choose your workspace which is anything over over here in your folders, you've got internet. It will go out and search the internet for you. And you've got this model knowledge. Now, I would turn this off for a lot of academic tasks because you don't want it hallucinating, just coming up with random stuff. You want it going out to the internet and finding you real references, real sources, and also looking in your workspace. So model knowledge, yeah, that's probably the least useful for an academic purpose. So you can then add documents as well. You can upload file, you can add from so terror which i'll show you how to do that in a minute and you can also connect more apps but overall really great now one thing i do want to show you is this funny thing create image so i went here and i said hey create a graphical abstract for this paper and then i pasted in the abstract for one of my papers and then it was like okay i generated this image and look the image looks actually pretty good i, I like the colors um but you can see that it's just like engineered vertical more mold <laughs> that's not even a, a letter with nanopi okay yeah like we're used to ai doing this but what i think it does give you is the ability to say okay well i want to maybe use this as a bit of inspiration for what, what my graphical abstract could contain now is it perfect no absolutely not would i use it no but i think it does give you an idea of how you can represent something visually so overall you know if, if you're using the uh this agent here create image i don't know what would you you'd use it for in an academic purpose but try it and give it a go and just let me know what you think but there's so many other things you can do oh love it love it and it gets even better check this stuff out so that was home now on this side, but if you click library, you can click here and they've got this updated view of all of the stuff you've uploaded. So you can see that you've got chats, you've got documents, and it's really easy to sort of like work out. If you only want certain things, you can filter here, you can sort it by things as well. And also you get a little summary um, on this side. It was a little bit awkward to try, you know, I, I really want to see this and you have to click on it to expand it. But overall, you know, it's nice that everything is in a single table. Now, one thing that's really annoying about these tools, and one thing I've encouraged you to do in the past, is to like keep your references off of a platform like this. But 
you can now connect this to Zotero, which I like. So if you go up here to plus and then you import, you can connect your apps. Now I've already done it, but you can see here if you connect your apps, if you haven't connected Zotero, you go through the steps up here and then import PDFs from your Zotero collections. You can also use Mendeley, Google Drive, Notion, OneDrive, wherever you are storing your references, you can now connect it as long as it's those ones. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, once you're in there, it's really great because you can then um, have a look in your library and it will include all of the stuff, all of the literature that you've uploaded from your Zotero. So I really like that. And then this is what was imported here from my Zotero, this one and preparation characteristics. So these ones came in from my Zotero. So it means that now I can access it, I can view it, which means that when I go over here, um, you know, it is working with the stuff I put in from my workspace. So absolutely love that, love connecting to Zotero. So if you are using Zotero or Mendeley, ah, it's easier than ever today to interrogate that information. Um, one thing that I really want you to know is that if you put your stuff into folders, so like Andy Research, and then you go up to this bit up here called chat, you can now chat with all of this information. So it's a good way to interrogate across multiple papers in one spot. I really like that. But it gets really, really cool because if you open up one of your papers, and this is a paper I've uploaded into my library, there's a number of things you can now do. For example, you can uh, also highlight. So if you want to say, yeah, this bit's the most important bit for me. This is cool. When I come back to this, I want this to be highlighted. There we are. Nice and highlighted for you like that. And then you can also add comments. So you can say, oh, remember this. Remember that. And then also you've got chat as well. So you can chat with a very specific uh, part. You can see I just selected mode <laughs> there. Um, but ultimately, yeah, here are all of the things that you can chat with. You can also chat with this document. It gives you some example questions. And uh, yeah, that's what I really like about this. So it is becoming easier and easier to chat with your documents, chat with multiple documents, highlight things, import things, and manage your references and your literature like an absolute perfect professional and that clever PhD student and researcher we all want to be. And obviously there's so much more to Inara that you need to know about that we can't squeeze into this video, but as a quick overview, look, if you click here and then select one of these, search web, if you highlight it, it'll give you the sorts of things that you can do with it. So it's a really nice sort of like way of showing users what you can do. Go through yourself and click through. You can do this for free to see what sort of things you can do because some of these tasks that they're allowing you, like complete form, I like that, complete form, then click on that. Uh, no, that one doesn't give you anything. Shut up, Andy, that was a lot. But there's other ones, search papers, you can see here if you click here, search for papers on that, search for papers mentioned in that, search for papers, you know, it does give you a really nice overview on some of them about what sort of things you can create. What about the image one? Create image from a text prompt, from a reference image description, variations of an existing input, that would be good. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do, go check it out for yourself because I love playing about with these tools and finding out what they can do for your research. Outsource the boring stuff, that's what it's all about. All right. Go check it out. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about what I would actually spend my money on in the AI tool world for academics and research. All right, go check it out.